And now I would like to introduce the creator of the Movies for Grown Ups Awards, Bill Newcott. Yeah, I may be looking a little smug in this video from 2006, but admit it, you would too if you'd just been introduced by a living legend like Angela Lansbury. When Dame Angela passed away recently, I, of course, thought immediately of this particular night, but also of the sheer breadth of a movie career that spanned, incredibly, nine decades. It began in 1944, when at age 19, she was Oscar-nominated for her very first film role as the streetwise housekeeper Nancy in the classic psychological thriller Gaslight. She's a tartar, isn't she? What do you mean by that? Well, you know, strict lark. I'm not going to sleep in the same room with her. See the way she looked at me? From her first moments on screen opposite the suave and sinister Charles Boyer, it was clear this newcomer could hold her own on screen with anybody. My name's Nancy, sir. I'm sorry, Nancy. Goodbye, little yellow bird. I'd rather brave the cold. The young Lansbury had a knack for landing plum supporting roles in films that would become classics. She was nominated for her second Oscar and won a Golden Globe, playing the sweet, naive tavern singer Sybil Vane in The Picture of Dorian Gray. Gladly introduce yourself, but she's proud. She won't meet anybody. When she performed this old British tune on screen, wartime British moviegoers burst into song along with her. And 40 years later, in a London set episode of her long-running TV series, Murder, She Wrote, Lansbury treated her lifelong fans to an encore. Talented as she was and successful as she had been, when Lansbury signed a contract with MGM in the 1940s, she was distressed to realize the studio did not seem to know what to do with her. For years, she was consigned to supporting roles, and when she starred opposite Judy Garland in the musical Till Clouds Roll By, they even dubbed another singer's voice over hers. You! You've come! Lansbury had a fun appearance in Danny Kaye's lavish comedy, The Court Jester. So this is Giacomo, king of jesters and jester of kings. And she played Victor Mature's doomed lover in Samson and Delilah. Hello, argue, lunch! But for the most part, she spent the 1950s starring in TV dramas, where she found her most challenging available roles been decided that you will be dressed as a priest to help you get away in the pandemonium afterwards. Then came 1962, and what many consider the crowning role of Lansbury's career. She played Eleanor Eisland, the scheming, traitorous mother of a troubled Korean War veteran, played by Lawrence Harvey, in The Manchurian Candidate. For 72 of the most chilling seconds in film history, Eisland lays out her bloody plot to place a communist plant in the White House. With spellbinding, soulless intensity, she informs her son that he is to use his marksmanship to murder a major party's presidential candidate. Lansbury earned her third Oscar nomination for the Manchurian candidate, and the Golden Globes once again got it right by naming her their winner. Indeed. It was at that 2006 Hollywood event that Lansbury candidly reflected on that landmark role and on how, ironically, it was Hollywood ageism that enabled her to get it in the first place. I do bring a certain unique aspect on the subject because I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that early in my career I was a beneficiary of Hollywood's obsession with youth. <laughs> My third, oh, you're very bright, I, I gotta say that. I hadn't even gotten that one. Anyway, by my third Oscar nomination, in fact, came for my role as Lawrence Harvey's mother in The Manchurian Candidate. 
despite the fact that I was 37 and I was only four years older than he was. <laughs> you see, there you go. Anyway, despite the fact that, that there you are, I, I was thrilled with the role and with the recognition, of course, that it brought. But as the years passed, I, I often wondered what other wonderful actresses might have hoped that they would get to perform that remarkable script. I mean, actresses who were, shall we say, more chronologically age-appropriate, but not considered box office appropriate. I don't think it's an accident that in many cultures, the storytellers are the village elders. Young people are terrific innovators, and their brash approaches to storytelling can often change the very way we stories are told. But it is only with the passing of years and a lifetime of experiences that the true storyteller can construct a meaningful context for these stories. Some say no one should even attempt to write a novel until they are well into their 40s. It is no stretch to suggest that may be true for movie makers as well. Angela Lansbury, always a class act. Damn right. I'm Bill Newcott. Than a prisoner be in a cage.